So then from this comes Haywire, right? Like, I mean, I don't know that it was like right, right after, but I know that you, and correct me if I'm wrong, you start playing with Vadim and then you guys, or like, like you guys then brought in Rick, who you worked with at Ingram Micro. I don't mean to tell your story. If Could you bring us then into the, the world of Haywire? So after all that, you know, changes, you know, um, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know what? I would still like to play. And I'd known Rick for a couple of years. We, this was right before we actually started working at Ingram. Oh, wow. So um, you knew him before. Like I always thought that was a war. Okay. How did you meet? Rick? Yeah. How did you guys, we, meet? we worked at, we worked at a, at a, a retail store called best products. Oh yes. Yes. The best. And okay. actually he used to, you know, he used to tell me, um, he used to tell me, yeah, there's this, there's this kid in, um, in Tony and Marie's neighborhood. Fountain Valley. Who's got a, yeah. Who's got, who's got a play school, you know, video camera and he runs around and makes movies, <laughs> you know? And I, so I knew about you before I had ever, you know, like seeing you see this explains, you know, used to tell me, well, when I showed up to Spanky's for the Haywire show, that was my second show. You guys, you, Vadim, Billy, you guys all knew me. And I was like, how do these guys know? And and so, okay, now everything is kind of making sense. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut, didn't yeah. mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. And so, you know, Rick and I, um, we we met and we, we both were into very similar music, but not exactly the same. I, I liked a lot more of the of the, you know, punk and hardcore. And he liked some of that. And then he kind of liked some of the, um, the metal that was developing, you know, at that time. And I liked some of that too. And so, you know, we'd always been like, Oh yeah, you know, we should just do something. And, and so, um, I started kind of, you know, like jotting down some ideas and things like that. And, um, he and I decided to practice, I think, and we just kind of ran over some stuff and, it was very, um, I wanted it, I wanted it to be just the most like abrasive, like band, you know, possible, just abrasive, loud, um, destructive, you know, just as loud as possible. Was, and, was um, Blast, was Blast an influence? Not really. Not really. Um, I was looking at a lot of other stuff and taking kind of like sounds and samples and ideas. Um, like, I mean, I, it, it seems, seems kind of generic, but like, you know, there was a period in uh, uh, the band Discharge, you know, from the UK where they were just like a machine you know, and they had gone from, again, like a band that was very thrashy to a band that was very, um, you know, uh, precise and could very in control of their music. And then, then of course, you know, they did, you know, one of their last releases, which, you know, killed it for everybody. But, um, but I mean, there were all kinds of influences born without a face, you know, um, stuff like that, that was just really, um, kind of just very, I guess, aggressive. So we, we did that. And then, um, you know, Hey, we need a drummer, you know, we need a drummer and, uh, well, I don't know, maybe I'll ask Vadim, you know? So I did. And Vadim, you know, came down and checked it out and he was like, yeah, this, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. And he decided, you know, yeah, I'll do this. You know, he was starting, um, uh, I think he was obviously out of high school and he was at that point where he was, you know, attending school and getting ready to transition. Uh, so, but he decided he wanted to do that. Um, and then we're like, well, we need a, we need like a singer, you know, and I even put an ad out, um, hung it up with Zeds. <laughs> no, actually just Zeds, you know, just, you know, this is what we're into looking for, um, just a very, very, you know, I, I think I even put a growler, you know, and, uh, and all of a sudden Billy's like, like, 
I'll check it out. I'll do it. You know, and that's how he came in at, at the, the last part. And then we just kept going forward. And again, um, Rick was uh, very um, proficient on guitar. So there were, there wasn't a lot of stuff like, Oh, I can't do that. Right. You know, he could do it, yeah. you know, and he could do it all and make it sound good and um, reliable gear, you know, and, and all of that other stuff. So we just started from there and just kept going. So when you're doing Haywire now, and since this is something that you've sort of like gotten together did you have any sort of like were you involved more with like the content at that point or was it still Billy because I know Rick wrote I know Rick and I never knew this that Rick wrote the lyrics to bring the power down but um did you contribute any more in that in that capacity lyric lyrically no I was much more involved in the in the music and um Billy just again um provided all the lyrics, provided the, the song content and, um, just, you know, he, it, it was, it was very mutual. You know, we would come up with these, you know, songs and ideas and then, you know, Billy would, you know, turn around and a day later, you know, have like lyrics, you know, and, uh, different, different themes and, uh, you know, not your like, you know, oh, I hate my mom, I hate my dad, you know, nothing, you know, not the generic stuff of early, you know, hardcore. Well, there's lines. I remember like, like, in, and it, it hit me more at this stage of my life than when I was younger for some reason, but just the line, like, I want to destroy everything you believe. Like I was, I was just like, like, wow, like that. I mean, cause Billy was still a fairly young gentleman at that time, even though to me, you guys were all like men, like, cause I was like, I think four or five years younger, but I was like, wow, like that really was like, a, you know, and, and then like, you know, going back to bring the power down or, or sword swallower or, or like all those, all those songs, just like there really was something different happening, but there was still that. I don't know if it was the sense of humor, but there was still that sort of, it was the look at the world that Half Off had. I felt that that transferred, in my opinion, very nicely to Haywire. And then the name of the band, did you come up with that? Did someone else come up? I did, yeah. Uh, you know, at the time, uh, reading a lot of comic books, and I found a comic book title called Haywire. And um, I'm just like, God, that's kind of cool, you know, and it just kind of describes it. So I suggested it and everybody, you know, stuck with it. Um, so it uh, that was that was my you know contribution. And in Private Hell, I believe, recorded in 16 or 24 hours or something. It was probably pretty quick. I think we did. Maybe one or two like recording sessions and then finished up with vocals or something like that. And then production. Um, we, we were, we were at a good, good point where we didn't have to do too many things over. And is so, that just because the band was so tight? Like the band went in and was so ready. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we were practicing, you know, like two nights a week and, um, and playing. So, you know, like I said, we were, we were pretty comfortable. So it went, it went fairly smoothly. When you um, do that, you know, you mentioned, you know, that like time, money for the half off stuff. And then so time, money for private, for private hell was still a consideration. When you guys do abominations, was there any more comfort in that? Or was that still the same, hey, we got to be as tight as possible and we need to... You know. Yeah, there was there was always that um, that element of of time, and the thing too that you know I always remember um, from back then is okay, we're gonna record. All right, I need like one hundred and thirty eight dollars to go buy the tape. And you're like. Okay, yeah, I was, I was, you know, thinking about the twenty dollars an hour for the studio time, <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, I need like X amount for the tape, and um, 
And another thing, I mean, uh, you were mentioning, you know, like pre cell phone, you know, oh my gosh, you, you'd book a tour and you're, you had to have like a benefit show for your phone bill. <laughs> There'd be a there'd be a GoFundMe yeah. for not for the for the tour to happen, but to book the tour. Just about, yeah, just about. <laughs> it, it, you know, that that was very, you know, and and email was it was you know it was uh, late eighties, early nineties. So those avail availabilities of communication weren't there. So is there know, a that's particular always... Haywire show that stands out to you as? Again, that feeling of, hey, you know what, like, the, you know, from, from, from doing a thrash band, young guy going to shows where you were sort of like, hey, this is, this has gone up even to another level. Or was going to Europe that thing for you guys? Go, going to Europe was part of it. Um, but, you know, I really enjoyed playing at... Uh, the country club in Reseda because it was just so loud. Yeah. And, and the stuff we were doing in the band was very, very loud feedback, distortion, delay, flanger, just a lot of effects that, you know, really benefited from having that sound system. You know, where, you know, when we, we would finish the set and everybody was just kind of like, whoa, okay, you know, like, okay, now what, you know, and, and so that was, that was like a good feeling, you know, feeling very um, uh, accomplished and being able to deliver it in the, in the way that you wanted it to happen. So now you um, weren't able to do the half off tour, but then you were able to do Europe. And to me, that's all. And then you're going overseas for that. And you mentioned the diabetes issue. What was it about? I, this was like, you know, it's a couple of years later. And it's just like, I'm going. You know, I'm, I'm going. I, I, you know, I blew the first one. I'm going. 